Hello Fantasy Faithfuls and welcome to the fifth team score projection video of the year featuring the Chicago Bears. The players I will be focusing on are Mitch Trubisky, Jordan Howard, Taylor Gabriel, Allen Robinson, Trey Burton, Kevin White and projections for Tariq Cohen. As you always do, we need to know how many targets and carries the players will have to share. The Bears 2018 opponents give up very few rush attempts but a lot of passing. This does not fit too well with the Bears as they have preferred to run the ball a lot lately and they land at a combined 396 rush attempts and 510 pass attempts. With the new coach I want to look at the market share differences to see who can benefit in opportunity with the new play calling. Nagy gives roughly the same share to wide receiver 1 and wide receiver 2 as Fox has done in the recent years. With major differences to the number 1 tight end who will see an extreme increase in targets with 23% of all the targets. Other impacts go to the third wide receiver who will go down slightly and the number one running back who will go down 3% and the run number two running back staying the same. For the carries, the running backs will see a lot less in chairs while the quarterback goes up in carries by 8%. This is something that will heavily impact Mitch Trubisky, Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen who are currently RB1 and RB2. Analyzing Nagy's coaching further, we can see that his offense prefers shorter passes over passes longer than 15 yards. The quarterback should have high completion percentage and take very few risks. The tight end is usually target more than 80% of his targets less than 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. The number one running back should run most of his runs up the gut and not bounce it to the outside. His quarterback should be prepared to get sacked a lot. Nagy's play calling leans slightly to the right side of the field with very few passes going deep. This can of course be impacted by what quarterback he has had, but for this video let's assume that it's not. In fact, he is now in this his Bears debut. He is their leading receiver in this game. That's his fourth catch. And look at this, wide open. And that is a touchdown for Bellamy. Now we can finally look at Mitch Trubisky. He will have 510 pass attempts and 48 rushing attempts. His passing trends have been updated with Nagy's play calling, so what he showed last year will change with the new coach. He's going to throw slightly more to the short right while getting his deep left throws down a bit. He lead heavily on the deep left last year, but with Nagy, we will most likely see a drop in the deep passes. His completion percentage in the deeper zones are terrible and way below the league average in all but the deep middle. This is too bad as Nagy preferred the outside when his quarterback goes deep. His completion percentage is in the short zones is okay, but will have to improve. Furthermore, his yards per completion is 1 to 3 yards below league average in every zone. This is nothing that I'm too worried about. A young quarterback on a bad team should not be on par with the rest of the league. So that all adds up. He throws far less touchdowns than the league average with 2.8%, but I expect this to rise to at least 3.2 in 2018. Fun fact, Trubisky has yet to throw a touchdown in the second quarter. His one game floor last year was 6.6 .6, and his one game ceiling was 16.7. Awful numbers that hopefully will go up, otherwise he will stay a non-factor in fantasy. From his own passing, Nagy's play calling, the pass catcher's abilities, his rushing trends, the opponents and sack trends, we arrive at a score projection. Trubisky will score 142 points from his passion, 34 from rushing, 76 from touchdowns and 223 in total. Next up is Jordan Howard with 238 carries and 61 targets. Breaking down his rushing to 7 running lanes as always, Howard is extremely interesting case. He is together with Tevin Coleman and Mark Ingram the only running backs to not have up the middle above 15%. He will have to adjust to Nagy's preferences of calling runs up the gut. His yards per carry are highest when he runs outside the left tight end which is perfect synergy with his usual running pattern. Fun fact, 
Howard has a tendency to drop off in games. He averages over 4.4 yards per carry all the way to the fourth quarter when he goes below 3.7. His touchdown rate over the last three years has been 2.6%, which is on the lower side of the number one backs in the NFL. Looking at his receiving, he is roughly 10% worse than the league average in catching the ball and one yard per catch below the league average in each zone. He should not get as many targets as Negita usually gives his number one back, so look for a change week to week. His one game floor has been 4.3 points and one game ceiling 20.1 top 15 in running back floor rankings and top 10 in ceilings, good but not great. From his own rushing, receiving, team's blocking abilities, Trubisky's passing, Nagy's play calling, and the opponents in 2018, we arrive at Howard's score projection. I project him to score 106 points from the ground, 29 from the air, 48 from touchdowns, and 183 in total. Pass over the middle. Touchdown! That's Trey Burton. Now we have Trey Burton as their number one tight end with 102 targets and 62 projected receptions. Breaking down Burton's receiving, we have a tight end that really doesn't catch too much that is thrown to him deep unless it goes to the right side of the field. The opposite can be said in the shorter zones where he does not even come down with half of his targets to the right. His yards per catch are the highest to the deep left of the field. That is good because it suits Trubisky's trends, but not too good since Trubisky can't complete a pass and Burton can't catch a ball in that zone. So most yards would come from the shorter passes to the left and over the middle. Fun fact, during his career, Burton has scored 50% of all his touchdowns in December. His touchdown rate is 6.3% higher than players like Delaney Walker and Travis Kelsey. His one game floor has been negative one point and one game ceiling 7.4. Expect both of these numbers to increase significantly as he will be the number one tight end in an offense that heavily focuses on the tight end. From his own receiving, teams, uh, passing trends, Nagy's play calling and opponents in 2018, I project Burton to score 69 points from his receiving 30 points from touchdowns and 99 points in total. Brandon bringing pressure. Bortles steps up, looking deep, wide open. Robinson, he's got it. Touchdown, Jaguars. I will not go in depth into Allen Robinson, but if you'd like to learn more about his receiving trends, I got a head to head video with him that you can find if you click the top right corner. And he will see 95 targets, Taylor Gabriel 68, and Kevin White 44 if he's the third guy. Robinson is projected to catch only 57 of the passes thrown to him, while Gabriel catches 43 and Kevin White 27. From the catches, Robinson will only gain 660 yards as he does not fit too well with the new scheme. Gabriel will 506, which is pretty good, and Kevin White is a non-factor. What makes Robinson somewhat viable is his 5 touchdowns, and this is also the least amount he can get with go high as 7. Lastly, a final look at their fantasy points compared to last year. Trubisky would have finished as QB16 with these stats. That is not bad, but also not great, so I'm not too high on drafting him. However, it's very interesting to me, and I will be looking into him even more this week with a fantasy snapshot. I like him a lot. I would not mind picking up Robinson or Burden. Burton has great opportunity considering the coach, and Robinson has the chance to be better if he can adapt to the scheme. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more weekly content. And as always, the spreadsheets are dark and full of terror.